The Cisco CCNA curriculum goes into great detail on how to secure network devices like routers and switches and firewalls and I'm going to talk about that here. Now most of the labs in the CCNA security curriculum cannot be done with Packet Tracer but some in the early chapters a few of the labs can be done with Packet Tracer so that's what I'm going to do right now. Once you've downloaded and installed the Packet Tracer program and you've run it if you want to what you do is you go down here and you grab your network devices and then drag them onto this stage and then you can configure them and you can also test them to see if they communicate with each other and you can establish network communications just like in, as in a regular network so for instance I can click on routers here now it tells me I'm in my routers and I'm gonna grab a let's say 2811 router and drag it and drop it here right then I'm going to click on the next devices switches and I will go and I'll get this 2960 switch right okay now the way you interface with these devices um, is interesting you can click on them and it opens them up in a separate window and you can look at the physical areas of the router and zoom in and zoom out and see all the ports that are on you can also look at cards that you can add to it you can see some um, graphical user-based tools for configuring the routers and then most importantly the command line interface which is where you're going to want to do most of your learning from the command line interface and this is just a quick and easy way to manage the router the switch is the same thing you can click on it and then once again you've got the physical aspects the the graphical user tool for configuring you know you can change some settings here um, of course and the best way to do it is to learn the command line interface which Cisco s expects you to know um, then to hook up these two devices what I'm going to do is I'll click on this lightning bolt which is the connections and a router to a switch connection we're going to use a straight through cable which is the black line we're going to click here and put it into the fast ethernet 00, zero port and then go over here on the switch and put it into the first port here let's say 01 so now I've got the router connected to the switch now that we have the router and the switch connected you can see our red lights showing that we do not have up ports on those ports we're also going to connect a PC so we're going to click on end devices I'm going to grab a PC here and drag that out here right and that'll act like a PC on the network so we're going to get another click on the lightning bolt for the connections grab a um, straight through cable and we'll connect from the switch let's say to port 10 all the way to the fast ethernet port on the PC notice the port by default is on on the PC so since the port is on the ethernet port is on on the PC we instantly start getting green lights and some activity here okay next thing we need is we're gonna get another PC and this PC we're going to place here and this will and instead of a PC we could even use let's say a laptop and we'll say that this laptop is an administrator who's going to console in to the router and console in means it's using a console cable also called a rollover cable and we'll click here and we'll go to the the R232 port the serial port and then we'll connect into the router to the console port so that's a console direct connection to the router alright now to console in and manage your router from your PC or your laptop just like you would on an actual router once again you have to have a console cable and what you're gonna do is you click on the laptop and you're gonna click on the laptop and you'll go to desktop and you'll click on terminal which is a uh, tool like hyper terminal right uh, in, in you'd probably be using putty or something like putty if you were actually doing this from uh, let's say a Windows 7 laptop you probably wouldn't be using hyperterminal anymore but hyperterminal is in Windows and you can install it in Windows 7 and it's there in Windows XP old school you click on hyperterminal and it has the the serial settings for serially connecting with a terminal to the router through the console port so bits per second data bits parity stop bits flow control and you have to know this these settings for the Cisco CCNA okay and probably CCNA security once you're there you can see that the router has uh, booted up started up it asks you if you want to 
do a wizard configuration or system configuration dialog which is kind of like a automated dialog to get your router up and typically we don't use that in the curriculum in the academy so we're gonna hit um, N for no and just hit enter and you're left with a router prompt and now you can start configuring your router now the text here is a little bit small to read so even though this is how you want to um, manage your router I like to go and just click on the router and I've made the text a little bit bigger so that it's easier to see in the video and so I'll just configure it from here if you don't mind of course on the Cisco exams if you were in a uh, simulated lab exam or essay exam uh, test exam you're gonna have to configure your routers and switches usually from a device consoled in or remotely connected in to the router or switch it's usually happening from a host or client usually you will not be able to just click on the router like I did and bring up this command line interface in the simulated uh, exams okay um, now that you're in the router it's time to configure it get everything up and running and then we need to secure it and then we need to do some advanced security measures that um, heighten the level of security on the router okay so I'm left here at the router prompt and you can see the uh, the default name of the router is router and we're at user mode and we're in the router without any password or any username or anything so you can see that this is a a first time installation right or a first time configuration you've got a brand new router never before been used and you're sitting there so uh, what are you gonna do right so the first thing we need to do is we'll type enable and hit enter and that gets us into privileged user mode as indicated by the um, hash here okay um, so now that we're in privileged user mode to get to global configuration mode we type configure terminal and hit enter and now the prompt turns into a config hash which indicates um, global configuration mode and this is the main configuration mode now we'll start with a number of commands to start securing the router right away and also to bring up our interfaces right so we have an interface that we need to bring up right here this Ethernet interface which is Ethernet uh, port 01 right now on yours I've turned this off if you go to options preferences you can say show port labels right I'm gonna do show port labels close that and now you can see that that's FA00 right here and on this switch FA which stands for fast Ethernet 01 and then this one's fast Ethernet 010 right okay um, alright first things first we're gonna change the host name of router and we'll change it to Dan's courses so we'll say host name Dan's courses right or Dan dash R1 right and now the name of the router has changed okay next thing we know we need to do is bring up that interface on fast Ethernet 00 so we're gonna say interface FA for fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 and hit enter that takes us into interface configuration mode and from there we put in the IP address IP space address 192.168 and we'll just use a one network 1.1 then the subnet mask alright hit enter now the IP address is on the interface then we need to turn it on no shut down okay now the interface is up if we minimize this you'll see or pull it down you see that now we've got a green light and the switch is gonna go from shutdown mode to um, listening to learning to forwarding and this orange light will turn green in a second just like an actual sh switch would when you um, hit plug into a port it uh, takes a few seconds for the for it to go to forwarding mode and for the light to turn green okay so now that we're here we can type end to get out of configure interface mode we do that and hit enter again and we're back to privileged user mode 
okay let's start um, securing our routers management interfaces right and what we mean by that is two two ways that we're going to secure this routers management interface we're going to se secure the console port right so we can console in so that it's not wide open right as long as anybody has a rollover cable right and has access to the router and they could just plug in and get right into the router right so we're going to secure the console port we're also going to need to secure the ability for people to remotely manage the router by connecting remotely into the router through a program like Telnet or SSH right and so the interface that we're going to need to um, secure there would be the virtual terminal interface or the virtual terminal interfaces so we're going to secure both of those interfaces there's an additional interface that you could configure which is the auxiliary interface if you click on the router you go to physical and you zoom in you can see that there's the console port, there's the auxiliary port. The auxiliary port is another management interface that can supposed to connect to a modem so that you could dial in and then manage the router. Now typically uh, this is not used too much in the curriculum. Uh, the CCNA security curriculum does show you the commands for configuring this port. I'm not sure if I will do so here. Um, it may be on the exam, you never know, but mainly the console port is uh, the one that you're going to focus on and then if you're um, going to remotely connect to the router you're going to remote in through the Ethernet ports right so the router needs an IP address first of all for you to contact it right remotely you know you can't tell net or secure shell to a machine that doesn't have an IP address right so I'm going to go back to command line interface so let's start with just securing the console interface what we'll do is we'll say configure TER, I'll hit tab, tab completion, configure terminal, gets me to global config mode, and then I'm going to type um, line console zero, and that will put us in the line configuration command to configure the console login. All right, so there we go. Now I'm in um, config dash line mode, and I can configure um, access to the router. Now, the most insecure way to do it is to just say password Cisco. That gives line console zero, the console port, the login port, um, the password Cisco. Right? You do that, and then you say login, and then you type end. Right? And what did that do? Well, what it did was if I exit out of the router, I'll type exit. Now I've exited the router and I've just, let's say, hyperterminaled in and I hit return to get started. I have to now put in a password to get into the router. Before I was just at the router prompt, you know, in right away. Now I have to type Cisco, right? So that's the first, first step in, let's say, securing the router. We've just given it a password, right? But the curriculum goes much farther and much more secure than just a um, password Cisco on the console port. So, but that's a good place to start, right? And one of the reasons that it goes farther than that is if we type enable to get to privileged user mode, we can do a show running tab, show running dash config, and you'll see that as I hit the space bar and and go more down into the um, this is the running configuration file of the router as it stands hardly anything in it but if we scroll all the way down to the bottom I hit the space bar a few times you can see that line console zero has the password Cisco and there's the password right in the configuration file right this is a uh, security risk if someone was able to um, get a hold of the configuration file of the router let's say you were backing up the configuration file across the network and someone was to intercept that traffic and grab that configuration file they could look at the configuration file and see the password right there in what we call plain text or clear text okay um, so we're gonna want to encrypt that also here is the line virtual terminal interfaces that are used for telnetting or SSHing into the router and you can see that it's 
it's here and the login command is even there but there's no password set to it yet so we're gonna do that next <laughs> 